guys and welcome back to my channel it's Shannon I am so excited because I have a really fun video planned for today we are going to be following a makeup tutorial from a book from 2007 that I found at the thrift store this is the book right here it is called the five minute face by Carmendy I don't know if you remember Carmendy she was the makeup artist on the TLC show what not to wear this was one of my all-time favorite shows back in the day and Carmendy was one of the first makeup artists I remember learning anything from in one of the first makeup tutorials I ever saw back then. We didn't have YouTube. I learned so much from her. So I saw this book laying in the thrift store and I was like, oh my god, Carmendy, I remember you. Read this whole book cover to cover and I thought it would be fun to follow this tutorial, see how my makeup turns out, see how her techniques hold up to the makeup we do today. And let's see how I end up looking by the end of this. Who knows? Before we do get into that, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you have not already. I would love to have you join our fairy fam here. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. I really appreciate it. And let's just dive right in. So here is the book. I found it at Goodwill. It was $3.99. I do have some thoughts on the book. 2007 is when it says the publishing date was, which would have been a year before I graduated high school. Do the math on that if you want. And I found it on Amazon. It said 2009. So we're looking right around that time. This was like the beginning of my makeup journey was learning from Carmen D. I thought it was really interesting in the book. She says that she was inspired by the art of watercolor. Originally her mother was a watercolor artist and she based her technique off of that. I like a lot of what she says. She believes that makeup should be used to enhance your natural features, what you already have not used to hide or change the way you look. Her whole thing is the five minute face. She has this technique in here. She says you can do your makeup in just five minutes, get out the door and make yourself look good. So we're gonna see if we can follow her little tutorial in here and see what happens. I'm so interested to see. There's a lot more in the book than just that. There's like tips on like products to use which are like really outdated. We're gonna just use what I have here today that best fits what I can find to match like the products that she would have been using back then. So it's not gonna be like exact but we're gonna do our best. I always just thought Carmody was so beautiful. I'm still inspired by her. I hope she's doing really well. One thing I want to note um, just right offhand that I noticed about the book was its lack of inclusivity mostly geared towards people that look like me and Carmody which like unfortunate there's definitely some parts dedicated to people with different skin tones but overall it's mainly not so that made me a little like sad. I feel like we've come a long way with inclusivity in makeup, which I'm very appreciative of. So getting that out of the way, I thought there was some really good tips in here that would still hold true today. So we're going to find beginning here. So this is where the tutorial starts. The five minute plan step by step here we are going to follow. So let's see here. The first step is foundation. So we're not doing any primer I guess. <laughs> I'm already nervous like I never do my makeup without primer so. She does stress the importance of skincare though, so that was like in there. Also wanted to mention there's a really good eyebrow tutorial in here on how to pluck your eyebrows. I remember learning that from her when I was younger. I think the eyebrow tutorial in here held up for sure. I don't normally wear foundation, so I'm just gonna use my BB cream because that's like the closest thing I have to a foundation. I'm going to be using the 100% pure BB cream. I took mine out of the tube. I have a TikTok explaining how I do this if you wanna check that out to save on products. So I have what was left in my tube in here. This is to apply it with a makeup sponge. I don't normally use sponges, so I bought these at Target. Old fashioned little makeup sponge. This was the closest thing I could find to what she uses in the book. It looks to be like one of these kind of like angled type sponges. This was before Beauty Blender. 
blenders existed. How crazy is that? They didn't have beauty blenders back then. What do I do? Use a makeup sponge for blending. It makes the job go faster. Dip the sponge into a bit of foundation and blend over the face, including eyelids and under the eyes. Lightly buff down the neck. Expect to use a nickel size amount for the entire face. Sorry, I'm trying to get these open here. So she says to dip the sponge right in. So that is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna start dabbing it over the face. I usually do use a brush for my foundation, so this is a little different for me. Obviously, this is going to take longer than five minutes because I am talking and explaining everything I'm doing. Honestly, I feel like this sponge is wasting so much product. That's one of the reasons why I don't really like sponges, because I feel like they hold a lot of bacteria and they waste a lot of your product, but I'm doing it Carmendy's way today. All right, I'm going to blend this all in. I'll be right back. Would not probably recommend buying these to use. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like that alone already probably took me five minutes. I'm not sure if it was just because the sponge kind of sucks. I do like the way that my skin looks. It blended in really nice. They're all not like a super full coverage, but it did help to even out my skin tone pretty nicely. Okay, what is our next step going to be, Carmen D? Okay, we have under eye concealer. Since you've already applied your tinted moisturizer or foundation under eyes, you'll need less concealer and we'll have a more natural finish. Most important thing to remember about concealer is less is more. I feel like that idea went to the wayside during the 2010s for sure. If you load concealer on to obliterate a problem area, it takes on a dry, cakey look as the day goes on and it will actually draw attention to what you're trying to hide. An interesting point. For under eyes, sweep concealer next to your eyes, inner corners where dark color is most concentrated and blend downward with a ring finger. Make sure to target only the dark areas of your skin. You start spreading it up and down and all around you end up with that I never took my sunglasses off vacation look. That's an interesting thought. Let's try it. We're just gonna do a tiny amount of concealer. I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape Ultra Creamy. She says just a tiny bit and blend with your finger. In the picture, it looks like they're putting it right here. So I'm just going to do a little dot on each side. Less is more and blend with the ring finger. I have to say this is way less concealer than I would normally use. I would normally put some over here too. It has to be the ring finger. It's kind of a tough angle over there. You know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. I think she might have a point here. I feel like just that tiny bit really did just brighten up my under eyes, but it doesn't look cakey at all or it doesn't look like I have a ton of makeup on. Okay, I'm not mad at that. There is a part about spot concealing for redness and blemishes. Apply with a thin concealer brush. Just paint on exactly where you need it and then blend it in. I do have a little blemish spot right here. I'll just do a tiny bit. And a little bit maybe under my nose is a little red. And right here I have a little bit. So I'm going very, very light with this. I really have a tapered concealer brush, so I'm just gonna use my finger. Do you think she has a point about loading too much concealer onto a problem area? I've definitely done that in the past, and I do think she's right. I think it can draw more attention to what you're trying to hide. Okay. How are we looking so far? It was really quick too, with using less product, it took a lot less time to blend everything out. Let's get to the next page. Powder. Apply face powder with a clean blush brush. That's interesting. Yes, a blush brush. The smaller size makes it easier for you to target the few places where you need powder. In contrast, a classically puffy powder brush dusts powder all over, leaving skin looking overly matted. Less powder is modern and leaves skin dewier. Dust it down your nose, across your chin, and over your cheeks and eyelids. That's all you need. Okay. 
Little can be applied under the eyes, but use only enough to set the makeup without causing it to cake together. I like to leave the tops of the cheekbones powder free. Even if you have oily skin, having a bit of shine in this area gives you a youthful, dewy look. If your skin is too matted down, you'll look dry and tired. Okay, a blush brush. Okay, okay. Just cleaned all my brushes, so luckily I do have this. And we're gonna grab some powder. I'm gonna use my Dior powder. This is what I normally use. So I remember none on the cheekbones. Okay, nose, chin, cheeks, and eyelids. Okay, nose, chin, cheeks, and eyelids, okay. That's all you need. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this is so opposite from like what happened with makeup after this part of history. It was just like powder everywhere and matte it all down. I think I will wear this for the rest of the night too and we'll check in and see like how it's looking in a few hours at least to see how it wears. I did the little bit on my under eyes like I was allowed to do that. I have to say that feels weird, but we're gonna stop. On to the next page. Highlighter. Ooh. Highlighters are my secret weapon and the key to the five minute face. These pearly shimmers come in fine powders. Blah, 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 blah. It's an eyeshadow brush or q tip. I'm triggered by the q tip. I don't know about using a q tip to put highlighter on. Eyeshadow brush or q tip. Sweep a little powder highlighter in three places under your eyebrows, inside corners of your eyes, and on top of your cheekbones. She says you can use a cream too if you want, a cream highlighter. You would use your finger. And there's a box on how to find your cheekbones. The top of your cheekbones are a key place to apply highlighter because it draws the eyes upward, highlights your bone structure, and gives the face more radiance. To find the top of your cheekbones, place two fingers side by side under the outer corner of your eye. That's the top of your cheekbone. I do feel like maybe a lot of times I put my highlighter down too far. According to this, it should be more here. Okay, Carmendy. An eyeshadow brush. Okay, what brush am I gonna use? This is crazy talk. Okay, I'm gonna use this fluffy eyeshadow brush. What highlighter am I going to use? I feel like I'm going to use something like not crazy because I feel like back then we didn't have like blinding highlights. So, okay. I feel like this right here, this is by Benefit Dandelion. Dandelion Twinkle. How cute is that? I feel like this is like my most subtle highlight. So this would probably be similar to what would it have existed in 2000 whenever nine. Under the eyebrow. It's very subtle. Can't even believe we're not gonna put any on the tip of our nose. Okay, inner corner. I'm gonna try to aim for up where she said. I kind of feel like this isn't showing up. I'm gonna try something else. I feel like this highlighter is just not showing up. Let's try this one. I know this is gonna show up. This is the Cookie Highlighter by Benefit. There we go. It's a lot different than where I normally put my highlighter on. There we go. And I'll just do a little more. There we have it, highlight is done. Blush is our next step. Let's see what she has to say. Apples of your cheeks is where we'll apply rounded areas that stand out when you smile very wide. For powder blush, apply using a brush made for face powder. So we're using a face powder brush for the blush now. Large size will hug your apple and apply the color with a natural, seamless finish. You should look like you're blushing, not like you've been slapped in the face. <laughs> okay, Carmendy. So we need a face powder brush. I guess I'll try this one. Let's go in with the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in Doll Face. This is one of my favorite blushes really pretty pink and we're going for the apple so how big that would be kind of right here i feel like this is something that's changed from then to now I've seen more like focusing blush up higher whereas back in the day we did used to put it mostly on the apples 
typically like a heavier blush. I see her point though, this is kind of hugging the apple of my cheek pretty nicely. Not putting any on the nose. This is really hard because I love a blush on the nose. Back then, unheard of. We, we did not put blush on our noses back then. So kind of weird that we put highlight on before blush because normally I would always put blush on first. Okay, got a nice little flush. Eyebrows are just hanging out looking crazy. We haven't done anything with those yet. Eyeliner. Oh boy. Okay. This look right here. This is where we're getting dated. Aim to apply eyeliner along your upper lash line as close to the roots as possible. Wiggle the pencil using a little back and forth motions. Punch with a q-tip to soften the line. This will give the illusion of a thicker lash line, but your eyes won't scream. Eyeliner. Use whatever liner is left on the q-tip to slightly smudge under your lower lash line for just a hint of color. Flip brown pencil liner is a universally flattering no-brainer shade. Okay, so we need a brown liner, I guess. Do you have a brown? I never wear brown liner. So it barely survived my declutter, but I did keep it. I guess needed it for a reason. Boy, okay. Let's see. We're smudging into the lash line. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way in. I just know that that doesn't look good on me. Okay, the second side did go a little better. I need to go get a Q-tip. I don't have a Q-tip in here. Okay, right, got the Q-tip. So now we're supposed to smudge it. Honestly, I feel like that just took most of it off. And then I can use this to smudge on the lower, she said. Very faint. Honestly, could probably do without that step. I don't usually put eyeliner on my top lash line. This is giving 2009. It's definitely. Okay, let's move on. Mascara. Be basic, just put mascara on. It actually says not to put it on your bottom lash line because that's where smudges and clumps happen most often, which I have to say I normally don't put mascara on bottoms. Confused, are we not putting eyeshadow on? All right, I just did a really light coating of mascara. Is that the last step? Last step is lip color. A very basic makeup look. Okay. She says use a tinted lip balm. It's a fast, natural way to add color, moisture, and protection in one easy swipe. Then just buy a double of this Burt's Bees tinted lip balm. I love this. It's in the shade Pink Blossom. I do think Carmody has a good point on the tinted lip balm. I think if you're in a hurry, really good option to just throw a little color on the face and get out the door. I'm alarmed that there was like no step to like fill in our brows or anything. I guess we're just rocking the natural brow in 2000s. <laughs> Okay, she says, check your look in the mirror and you'll see you're perfectly polished in five minutes. Enjoy it, master it, and then see what else, where else it can take you. This is a picture of like the final look of the model in the book with the five minute face going on. So what do we think? Right here, back down and we'll give our final thoughts. Honestly, it's a lot less makeup than I would normally wear, but looking in the mirror, it does look pretty good overall. It looks really light and natural. I think that the eyeliner is what looks dated to me the most out of anything. I think that is the step I would skip. Not into like a brown liner like that, but like back in the day that was like the thing. I do remember that. Overall, I do think my skin looks good. I kind of think that she kind of has something going on with this kind of like less is more type of feeling. So like we didn't use primer or setting spray, which is kind of crazy. I'm gonna leave this on and see how it lasts and I'll check back in with you guys a little later and we'll see like how we're lasting throughout the night. I'm gonna go like cook dinner. I'll check back in. Yeah, overall, I think there was some good tips in there. I kind of like the idea of like using less powder and less concealer, less products overall. I like the idea of putting the highlighter up a little higher and of course I love the tinted lip balm. That's something I use all the time. I'm gonna throw this in the trash. I don't like makeup sponges. That's just a personal preference. We have come a long way from this type of sponge though. I mean there's like beauty blenders and all kinds of sponges you can use. I prefer like a face brush but 
Anyways, this was really fun. Final thoughts on the book. I think that it's kind of dated in a lot of ways, but some of the things that do hold true. There was one thing that completely triggered and alarmed me in the book that I need to find. 30, 40s, and 50s, like how you're supposed to do your makeup. I'm in my 30s. The 30s section was really goofy. This was the part that really upset me. <laughs> it says, Glitter be gone. There is nothing worse than seeing a woman in her 30s wearing glitter. You can get away with it in your teens and 20s, but by 30, we should graduate to shimmer. Shimmer is more refined than chunky glitter and gives you a more polished and sophisticated glow. So when you're shopping for makeup, whether it's lip gloss or eyeshadow, make sure the effect looks pearlescent on the skin, not like metallic confetti. Obviously, if you've watched my channel, you know that I love glitter and I love wearing glitter. And so I just like don't agree with that, really. I don't think there should be like an age limit on what you should or shouldn't be allowed to use or do when it comes to makeup. So I will not be taking that advice from you, Carmendy. Like, I get where you're coming from, girl, but... It's just not happening here. For all though, this was really fun. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. Let me know if there's anything that you're gonna like take away from this tutorial or like Carmody's method and try to apply yourself. But let me know what you thought. Are you glad this got left in 2009? Or like, do you think there's some good stuff in here? Stick this on the bookshelf and keep her around, I guess. I'll always like Carmendy. She was one of my first like fashion and style like gurus and inspirations when I was young. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you have not already. I do post a new video every Sunday and we have a lot of fun over here on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate it. And until next week, remember that you are special, beautiful, and magical and I love you so much. Bye! All right, hi fairies, checking in on how the makeup is lasting. It's been about maybe like five hours since I filmed the video. I went out to the dollar store, got a few things. I cooked a big dinner. Me and James just ate. Just say I'm surprised at how long the makeup has lasted and how good it still looks. I don't know how it would last like through like a full day of work or like something like that. But as far as like lasting through the night, I think it still looks really nice. I think maybe there is something to like doing a little less. It doesn't end up like getting as cakey and messed up. I guess like the less you have on, like the less there is to ruin maybe. Overall, I like it. Whenever I came out, James was like, you look a little like early 2000s. Like you look a little different. I think maybe it was like just the application of the eyeliner maybe. There was things I liked about it. Like I like how the highlighter's on. I think the blush looks good. I like using a little less concealer. I feel like I'm gonna take some things away from it, you know, keep the good, leave the bad. I kinda like the idea of just like less is more sometimes. You need to get out the door, just throw on what you can and even just like a few little things can make a big difference. So for all, I think Carmendy for the most part held pretty true throughout the last, how many years would that be? I don't even know, I'm good at mental math. Anyways, yeah, this is what it looks like. Not too shabby.